Hi guys, this is Al Bosco, and welcome back to another video. Uh, I haven't done a video in a few months. Uh, the last one was in March, I think. Um, and it was a tribute video to Taylor Hawkins, uh, the drummer of the Foo Fighters, who uh, unfortunately passed away, uh, and very shocking uh, to many people, myself included. I'm still uh, a little shocked. Well, I, I still am shocked, to be honest. Um, so this video is going to be the top ten, my top 10 favorite songs of the Foo Fighters, uh, love this band a lot. Uh, huge Dave Grohl fan when he was in Nirvana. Uh, big Nirvana fan growing up. And uh, I love uh, uh, that one album he did with uh, Queens of the Stone Age, uh, Songs for the Deaf. I'm, I, I'm a, a big fan of Queens of the Stone Age in general, but that's just a perfect album. Uh, but uh, today's going to be a video um, about uh, my top 10 favorite songs from the Food Fighters. This looks just really difficult. Um, and uh, I've been off for a few months just because of how busy I was. And uh, I will be busy uh, for the next few months. So I'll try to upload as much as I can. But I want to take a little bit of a break. Um, try to, you know, get some stuff done. You know, personal stuff uh, that I had to uh, do. So uh, I'm sorry I was gone for a few months. But I had to do stuff. Uh, so this is going to be uh, my personal 10 favorites. Uh, this was a very challenging list because the Foo Fighters have had so many incredible hits. Uh, not only hits, but just incredible songs in general on all of their albums. They haven't had a bad album at all, in my opinion. I, lo I love all their albums. I like the uh, most recent album, uh, Medicine at Midnight, which came out last year, I believe. Um... Yeah, it was last year. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, all of the members. Uh, all the members are really great at what they do. There's a bug. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, here's my list of my uh, 10 favorite tracks from the Foo Fighters. Uh, coming in at number 10 is going to be a song from the double album In Your Honor, which was released in 2005, I, I want to say. I believe it was 2005. In Your Honor was a uh, double album. Disc one was electric songs, and disc two were acoustic songs. And uh, this is a song from the uh, uh, electric side, uh, or the electric disc uh, of that album. And it's probably their mo the most popular song on that album. Yeah, it probably is the most popular song on this album. Uh, and definitely one of their more popular songs of all time. It's definitely... If it's not in their top five most popular songs, it's got to be in the top three. Uh, it's an iconic song. Uh, sure, it's played out a lot, but I, I never get tired of it. Uh, and that song is Best of You. Um, yeah, everyone knows it. I mean, it's a it's a very popular song. Uh, it's a very catchy song. I love Dave's vocals on the song. Um, I love uh, Tay Taylor's drumming on this on this song is incredible. I love the drum fills at the end of the song. That's really challenging uh, stuff to play. I've, I've tried playing that on drums, and it, it, it is very challenging. Um, uh, I love the uh, uh, the guitars from Dave and Chris Shiflett, and uh, Nate Mendel uh, on bass is great the whole bit. This is when they were a four-piece. Uh, now it seems like they keep adding uh, a bunch of members. Uh, uh, up in the, Before Taylor passed away, there were a six-piece um, and, uh, yeah, they kept most of the members from the beginning. Some had to, uh, leave, you know, Pat Smear in the late nineties, he left, uh, but then he came back in the early 2010s, um, for Wasting Light, uh, and the, the keyboard player that they had as a session musician, they credit him now as a full-time member, uh, Rami Jaffe, uh, is his, uh, uh, name. Uh, but Best of You is a really great song. I've always loved it. Uh, it's definitely one of my uh, favorite Foo Fighters songs, and definitely uh, a favorite of most Foo Fighters fans. Uh, so Best of You comes in at number 10. Coming in at number 9, from the uh, One by One album, the album before that, that was Chris Shiflett's first album with the band. He joined in the late 90s, early 2000s, after um, There Was Nothing Left to Lose, which is just a trio of Dave, Nate, and Taylor. Um, and, uh, it's the opening song off, uh, One by One, definitely one of their more heavier songs, I think, uh, and that song is All My Life. 
I've always loved the song from the guitar intro. Uh, it just pulls you right in, and then uh, where they're you know kind of quiet in the beginning. Uh, Dave Grohl sings kind of quietly, and then they uh, um, and then after that, it's it gets louder. Um, I love that uh, Taylor's drumming. This is definitely one of my favorite songs to play on drums by the Foo Fire, and especially uh, uh, when it comes to the drumming of Taylor Hawkins. This was definitely one of my favorite songs to play. I play it uh, a lot. Uh, it, it is a very fun song. The fills he does is insane. Uh, the lyrics are really cool. Uh, I love when um, Dave uh, just yells out, done, done, on to the next one, done, I'm done, and I'm on the next, on to the next one. I always love that. Uh, and I love the the energy and the, uh, you know, uh, um, <laughs> the, 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 the amount of times he has to yell. I, I don't know how he does it. Uh, because he yells a lot uh, on their songs, or he screams a lot. Uh, I don't know how he does that, because there are so many songs on so many albums that they've done uh, where he screams a lot, where he, his voice gets louder, especially on a song that uh, we'll get into later. Um, but All My Life is just a really great song, a great way to open the album, uh, and it comes in at number nine. Coming in at number nine for me is All My Life from One by One. Coming in at number eight, uh, gonna go to The Color and the Shape, uh, my personal favorite Foo Fighters album. I mean, it's, it's, you know, that's the one with the more radio-friendly stuff, but for me, it's so hard not to put, put it as my favorite. I mean, between that and the first album, those are probably my two favorite, uh, Foo Fighters albums, which is both great, uh, and at this point, they were... Still, it was a trio between Dave Grohl, Pat Smear, uh, he didn't leave yet, this was his last album before he came back, and Nate Mendel. Um, and, uh, what, what was the drummer's name? I, they, he had an, uh, they had an original drummer, I want to say it was William Goldsmith, I think that was his name, uh, I could be wrong, um, but he was the original drummer for this album, and... I guess Dave didn't like the drum tracks that he was um, playing, so uh, William ended up getting uh, fired from the band. Or I, I don't know if he was fired or he quit. He probably got fired. Um, so Dave recorded, being the amazing drummer from Nirvana, uh, he would record the drum tracks. This was before Taylor joined the band. Um, and uh, th they were still a trio. I didn't even get to my, uh, number eight. I was just talking about this album. My number eight, um, probably their most popular, well, I don't know. They have a lot of, again, they have a lot of popular songs. This is definitely one of the more, po there are a, a few big hits off of Color in the Shape, and I'm gonna mention quite a lot, uh, of this album in my list, but, uh, this is the one that if, even if you're not a Foo Fighters fan, you, you know it immediately. Uh, I wanted to rank it higher, but there's so many... You have to understand, there's so many great songs from this band. Uh, my number eight is My Hero. You know, again, and, and it, it, it kind of gets overplayed, but I don't care. I, I'll, I'll listen to it whenever. And, um, yeah, it, it's just... Uh, I mean, when, it, when you hear it, you know. When you hear the drum intro, uh, great drumming, by the way. It's from Dave Grohl, so how can you not love the drumming, right? But, um... It, from the drum intro in the beginning, you automatically know what it is, and then the bass from Nate, uh, and then the uh, guitar notes from uh, Dave and Pat. I, I believe Dave recorded uh, guitar on here as well. I mean, he, he plays guitar in the band, so it, that would make sense. But uh, my hero, I mean, the lyrics are so iconic. The chorus is really iconic. I mean, that's definitely one of the uh, most popular songs of the alternative rock scene in the late 90s and maybe even in the decade in general um because uh obviously after um after kurt cobain uh passed away from nirvana uh dave formed this band uh and i'll get into that more uh but coming at number eight is my hero absolutely love this song i never get tired of it even if it is overplayed which it, it might be but it's it's still a really classic song it's a great song so coming in at number eight is My Hero from The Color and the Shape. Coming in at number seven, another song from The Color and the Shape, uh, but it's not a big hit. It's actually a deep cut. Uh, well, at least I call it a deep cut. I don't know if I've heard it 
on um on uh the uh Sirius XM or radio before. Um but this is uh actually the closer on this album. Uh and it's a song called New Way Home. I've always really liked the song, but I, for whatever reason, I've grown to love it. I love the, I mean, the, the, the drumming is phenomenal. The, <clears throat> excuse me, the guitars and bass are great. Uh, I love Dave's vocals, but I think my favorite part of the entire song is when they slow everything down, well, when they stop and then they slow everything down. They, they just go, it goes for, I think, I think the song's about five minutes long, and most of the song is them after the first part of the song, which is, you know, fast tempo, uh, or, or not really fast, but medium tempo, that kind of stuff, and then they stop, and then they pick up very quietly, on like the quietest dynamic, probably like Gianichi mode or something like that, um, and you, and they're very quiet for, like, two minutes, if that, and then they pick up the pace, they start to accelerate, and then when Dave starts uh, raising his voice in his vocals, that just, it, I, I love that so much. That's one of my favorite moments of the record in general. It, it's just a great way to end the album. And then after uh, um, Dave is done, uh, or, or after uh, he starts to raise his voice, the band kicks in, and then he's raising at the top of his vocals. That's probably not the highest note he's hit. He's, hit. he's probably hit a lot of high notes, higher notes, maybe, um, especially um, another song from this album, which I will mention soon. We'll, we'll get to it later. You, you'll see. Uh, but my number seven is New Way Home. I love this song so much. It's definitely become one of my more favorites. <clears throat> as time goes on. So coming at number seven is New Way Home from The Color and the Shape. Coming in at number six, another one of their more popular tunes. Uh, <clears throat> this is a song off of their 2007 album, Echoes, Silence, Patience, and Grace. Uh, great album. Another, another really great album. I love this album a lot. Uh, and it's another opener of theirs. They have a lot of great openers. Um, one of my all-time favorite songs in general, and especially if I look at the decade of music in the 2000s, this is definitely up there. I don't know if it's my favorite. It, it's definitely in my... It, it would have to be up there in my top 10 favorite songs of the 2000s, because this is just a phenomenal track, uh, and it opens up uh, Echo, Silence, Patience, and Grace, and that's a song called The Pretender. Uh, another one of their more popular songs, a huge fan favorite, uh, and a really great video. They, they, they had a lot of great videos, uh, and especially another one, which I'll mention soon. Um, but uh, The Pretender is, it starts off very slow with uh, great guitar uh, work from, I, I, I don't know if it, I don't know if it's Chris or Dave playing in the beginning, it could be both, but um uh, and I know they, uh, the band likes to double track their stuff, uh, especially Dave likes to double track his vocals and guitar. Uh, but I, it opens very slow, kind of, kind of, not really quiet, but kind, you know, um, mezzo piano. I, I think I think that might be the uh, the dynamic uh, in the beginning, and then all of a sudden you hear Taylor Hawkins doing quarter notes on the snare drum. It sounds like a gun being fired. It's so it, I love that a lot, um, or the the sound of the you know what I mean the the <clears throat> when he plays, uh, and I play I often play this song on drums too. It's another really difficult song to play on drums because his fills on this song are insanity. I don't know how he did it, but it, it still blows my mind to this day. Um, but the fills are great. Uh, the lyrics are really great. I love Dave's vocals on the song, and I believe Taylor sings back backing vocals on the song. And uh, uh, what else was I going to say about the song? Just overall, the song tray. Oh yeah, and the guitar in the in the middle of the song when everyone else stops playing, it sounds a lot like Chuck Berry. It, it sounds a lot like Chuck Berry in influence. I think they were trying to go for a Johnny B. Good type of thing or something. I'm not sure, but the bridge of the song is great. The whole drumming is incredible. 
Um, and th- and I love at the end where uh, Dave just just screams uh, his uh, vocal cords out. But it- it's just an incredible song from start to finish. Um, I love listening to it uh, whenever I uh, whenever I put it on. I'm just I ignore everything and I uh, just listen to the song in peace. Or maybe not in peace. Maybe maybe I listen to it whenever. But well, yeah, I do listen to it uh, whenever I do. But it, it's just such a phenomenal way to open up an album. Uh, so coming at number six is the Pretender from Echo Silence, Patience, and Grace. Now we're down to the top five. Coming in at number five is a song from There Is Nothing Left to Lose. Another really strong album. Uh, yeah, like I said, these guys don't have a bad album in my opinion. Um, and uh, <clears throat> this was probably their first charting song. I don't think anything from Color in the Shape charted. I think this was the first song that charted on the Billboard uh, Hot 200. Um, and uh, it's it, it's another big hit of theirs, but it's such a it's such a it, it sounds like a lot like a motivational song. Uh, and this was Taylor's first album with the band. And, uh, again, may, this might be their best video, I, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. But my number five is Learn to Fly from There's Nothing Left to Lose. I mean, the the um, the video is great. I, it features Tenacious D in the beginning, which is awesome. Uh, but Dave's vocals is great. The guitars from Dave is great. Or the guitar, I think, because this was when they were a trio. It was Dave, Nate, and Taylor. Uh, Nate's bass is great. Um, and Taylor's drumming is great. I love it. Taylor's drumming on here is more, um, I don't want to, I don't know if I want to say simple because his, dr- his drumming on pretty much most of the, uh, stuff he played, if not all, were pretty challenging. Uh, but th- this song, and this is another fun song to play on drums as well. Th- this song is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It- it's, it's, um, more chill because there's parts of the song where um you know it, it's it's more God, well, i'm drawing a blank on the word but uh it's um it's more calmed down as opposed to some of the uh um the more um i'm having a brain fart today uh more of the uh electric uh stuff there but more of the more up tempo uh more loud stuff they played, and this is this can be a loud song if they want it to be. I mean, I guess whenever they play it live, um, but this is another uh, really great song. The lyrics are great. The uh, uh, um, vocals, uh, guitar, bass, and drums. The whole band is great on this song, and uh, it, it, it probably I have seen live performances of this, and it was great. And I remember um, a few years ago when um, Dave Grohl broke his uh, leg. Um, at, um, it was, it, what, where, um, where, I think it was in Sweden he broke his leg, um, where he, uh, was, I think they were playing Monkey Wrench or something, and then they, he just falls, uh, into the, uh, pit, and, uh, he announces to the stage, I broke my leg, but I'll be back, uh, and then, I think the song they played when he was back was Learn to Fly, and that was a really great, um, performance of that. Uh, but overall, it's such a great song. It's definitely one of my favorites, um, and a great song from a great album. I do love this album a lot. Sadly, this is the only song from the album from There's Nothing Left to Lose that made my top ten. I love the whole album, and you'll hear me mention more in my honorable mentions. But coming in at number five is going to be Learn to Fly from There's Nothing Left to Lose. Coming in at number four, going to go all the way back to the first album, where... It's just Dave Grohl. He plays all the instruments. There, no Pat Smear, no Nate Mendel. Um, again, Taylor Hawkins didn't join. I, um, I, I think the drummer's name was William Goldsmith, the guy who got fired during the Color and the Shape sessions. This is just him. Uh, and another phenomenal album opener. Uh, and by the looks of this list, this is probably my favorite album opener of theirs. I, and, and this is the only song from the first album that made my top 10 and I love that album so much. It's one of my favorite albums of all time, the self-titled debut. Uh, and the song is, this is a call, the song that started it all uh, for the Foo Fighters career. And it is such a great way to start your, what a way to start your career as a, well, I mean, 
not his entire career, because, uh, again, after Kurt Cobain uh, took his own life out, sadly, um, uh, Dave Grohl, um, he didn't want to uh, be the drummer of the band because he said it reminded him too much of Kurt, and he, he just couldn't, I guess, I guess he still was really emotional from that. I mean, who wasn't, right? But um, he played uh, every instrument. He played guitar, bass, drums, and he sang. I believe he self-produced it, too. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but um, this is all him. Uh, every song, uh, I believe there were uh, 12 songs on the album. Uh, yeah, 12, something like that. Um, and it's just him. And uh, it, it's incredible. All the songs are great, but This Is A Call is such a phenomenal way to open up the album. The lyrics are great. The vocals from Dave are outstanding. Uh, just everything about the song in general is so good. Uh, and yeah, it's just a really great way to open up the album. So, and, to uh, start your career. Uh, so coming in at number four is going to be, uh, this is a call from, uh, the self-titled debut. Um, if you're wondering what's going on, my, uh, pets are, yeah, that, that's my dog Elvis. Uh, he's, uh, right there. And my cat Larry is behind my chair. Um, they get along sometimes, and, uh, sometimes, well, actually, no, most of the time, they, they, uh, don't get along. But anyway, I can talk more about, uh, my pets in another video. Uh, that actually might be, uh, an interesting idea. But anyway, uh, coming at number four for me is, this is a call from the self-titled debut. All right, now we're down to the top three, and I flip-flop these three a lot, actually, and, uh, Two are from an album I already mentioned, and one is from an album I did not mention. Well, I mentioned the name, but I didn't mention the album in depth. Uh, but I'll uh, get into it more. So coming in at number three, it's a song from The Color and the Shape. You can tell I love that album. Uh, and it's probably, along with My Hero, definitely the most popular song on the album, and definitely another great video. Um, and uh, I never get tired of it, even if it's played out. I love that song. Uh, so much. Uh, it's Everlong. I absolutely love Everlong. I think that the <clears throat> quiet guitar in the beginning is great, and then the drums are great. Yeah, this is definitely one of the... I've tried playing this song on drums. It just shows you how incredible the drummer Dave Grohl is. He is just insane. Um, the drums are great. The guitars are great. The vocals are really great. I love... Um, the chorus of the song, and I love, um, the, uh, vocal harmonies, yeah, there's Larry, uh, the vocal harmonies, uh, in the song, just the entire song is so perfect, the instrumentation on the entire thing is just unbelievable, uh, and it's such a, it's amazing, and when I saw, um, uh, Nandy Bushill, I think her name is, uh, the, the young drummer, um, uh, she's, she's, she's amazing. She's a young drummer from, uh, England, I think. Uh, yeah, I believe she's from England. Um, and originally, uh, on YouTube, she challenged, uh, Dave Grohl to a drum off. And, uh, Dave responded, and then I think she came back, or, I think she came back, and then, um, Dave said she, uh, uh, kicked his ass, which was really funny. Uh, and then, they made arrangements, and this was last year, I believe, or a few months ago. Um, <laughs> she got to play Everlong on drums live with the Foo Fighters, which was absolutely amazing. I, lo I love watching that video. Um, and uh, she she did a really great job, and uh, uh, Taylor uh, sat out uh, while she was playing drums, and he was watching her play drums, and he, he just had the a smile on his face. He, he had a really nice uh, smile, made ev everyone else smile. Um, but she did a really great job. And uh, when they got to the chorus, Dave just yelled out, Sing it for Nandy! Uh, I, I love that uh, performance. It's so great. Uh, but coming in at number three is Everlong from Color and the Shape. I absolutely love it. It's such a great song. Um, and it could rank higher, um, but my top two are, have been my top two for actually quite some time. Uh, but coming in at number three is Everlong from the Color and the Shape. Coming in at number two, from the same album, from Color and the Shape. Uh, I did mention the song before, um, and uh, I 
have always loved this song. I find it irresistible. I absolutely love it. Uh, Monkey Wrench is my number two. I mean, the guitar is so... It, it, it just grabs you in, and it never like goes. It, 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 it never lets go. Um, it's, it's just, uh, phenomenal. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the guitars are great. The bass is great. The vocals from Dave are great. And the lyrics, I think, um, I think Dave was going through a divorce at this time. So this song is, I, I think about his ex-wife. Um, but man, when he gets to the, and what I mentioned before of him screaming his vocals, he just... I don't know how he can perform this live because, and and you all know what I'm talking about if you know the song. He, uh, I, uh, what is it called? I think it's the bridge, otherwise known as the breakdown of the song, um, where he, um, just shrieks or he raises his voice, uh, nonstop for this bridge and he just yells in, um, in the song and in the video, in the video, another great video, by the way. These guys had a lot of great videos, um, but Monkey Wrench is great. I love um, the, everyone. Everyone's playing on this song is just so good, and uh, definitely a great song that they played live. And they did play that live when uh, that's when that's the song they played when Dave broke his leg when he fell in the, uh, into the pit and then broke his leg. Uh, so. Yeah, Monkey Wrench uh, from Color in the Shapes is my number two. Absolutely love it. It could be my number one. But my number one is, I have a special connection to the song, and uh, I just think that it's a song that I have always loved and will never get tired of. Uh, it's a song from Wasting Light. I did mention the name of the album, uh, but I did not talk about the album enough. Uh, I love Wasting Light. It's such a great album. But, and this is the closer to the album, uh, I, <clears throat> I love this album a lot, and I love this song a lot, it's my number one favorite song from, uh, the Foo Fighters, and that's Walk. No, not the Pantera song, <laughs> two completely different songs. Now, I think, uh, lyrically, this song is about Dave, I, I, I think this is about, um, Dave being far away, even though, I mean, he was probably near his house, uh, from the studio, but I think he wrote this song for his daughters when, uh, uh, he didn't have time to watch them, I, I think, and then he would, uh, you know, record stuff in the studio, and, uh, Walk is just a great song from his vocals, Taylor's drumming, uh, Nate's bass, uh, Chris and Pat's, uh, guitars are great, I love, and this is a, another kind of motivational song, um, and it's such a perfect song from start to finish, and, uh, it's a great way to end a perfect album, in my opinion. In my opinion, Wasting Light is a 10 out of 10. I, I absolutely love every song on that album, uh, and, uh, yeah, this is just an incredible song from an incredible band, uh, and I, I'm, I really wish I got to see them live. I'm really sad I never did, um... I don't know if they're going to continue. They, well, they're doing two tribute shows for Taylor, one in the UK and another in LA. Um, I won't be able to attend either one of them, sadly. Um, but uh, it, it, I don't know if they're going to um, continue after this. As a bit. If they do uh, with a different drummer, I don't know if it, 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 I don't know how that'll work because a lot of people think that um, a lot of people know that Taylor was just uh, a bright mind in this band, and uh, yeah, it's it's been very tough without him. Like you see, so many people, uh, and I'm and this was after I posted my tribute video to Taylor. So many people on social media from so many musicians paid tribute from Ringo Starr to. Um, uh, Rick Astley, of all people, well, he did perform with them live. Um, to uh, who else? Tony Iommi, I think, from Black Sabbath, uh, uh, paid tribute. Uh, Brian May from Queen. Uh, well, Taylor was a huge Queen fan. Um, uh, his buddy, he's a huge James Addiction fan too. So his buddies uh, from James Addiction, like um, Harry Farrell, 
uh, you know, everyone else in that band, but so many people paid tribute to, uh, um, to this man. And it just shows you how great of a human being Taylor Hawkins was. You know, Stuart Copeland, uh, Liberty DeVito, who was Billy Joel's drummer. Just so many people paying tributes, and it's really touching uh, see how well liked he was. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been really difficult, uh, without Taylor, but we have been honoring him ever since we, uh, he left us. Uh, so here's my, uh, list. Uh, this is my, uh, my, uh, uh, top 10. And now I'm going to show you my, uh, honorable mention. Well, I'm not going to show you. I'm going to tell you uh, and I'll try to go through them quick as I can. Uh, so, and, uh, <clears throat> if this is your first video of my top 10 songs that you're watching, uh, I'm go through every album and I, uh, talk about a few, uh, of the songs, um, that I, uh, that did not make my list, but I think, uh, are worth mentioning. Uh, this whole series, by the way, is, uh, and I mentioned this before, this whole series is, uh, all the credit to Pete Pardo from Tea's Tranquility. He's uh, one of my favorite YouTubers. And um, if you haven't uh, seen his uh, um, his channel and uh, my cat is... I, I, why, why, Larry? Um, <laughs> he jumped on my uh, table. Um, uh, if you haven't subscribed uh, to uh, uh, the Sea Tranquility Pete Pardo's YouTube channel, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's a really entertaining YouTube channel if you love music. If you love heavy metal, prog rock, jazz fusion, you name it, he does it all. Um, I think my cat wants to get out. I'll let him out. Um, but, uh, yeah, here's my uh, uh, honorable mention. So from the first album, I'll stick around. A really great song, kind of a, uh, uh, a hate letter to um, Courtney Love, who is Kurt Cobain's uh, wife, uh, well, widow at the time, and still to this day. Um and uh, <clears throat> this, I, I know they patched things up. Uh, both Dave and Chris Novoselic, I think they, he and uh, Courtney had a falling out as well. Um, but uh, yeah, they patched things up. Uh, overall, though, she she gets a, quite a lot of hate. Um, but I'll stick around. Is a really great song. Uh, Big Me is great. That, another uh, funny video. Uh, Futos the Fresh Fighter. It's uh, I, I love uh, Big Me. That's another great song. Alone and Easy Target is really great. Uh, Good Grief, Floaty, Weenie Beanie. Weenie Beanie is a really heavy song. Oh, George. Uh, I love For All the Cows. That's such an entertaining song. Ecstatic is great. Watershed, Exhausted. Those are the... I mentioned the entire album because I absolutely love it. Um, From the Color and the Shape, Doll is a really great song. Uh, hey, Johnny Park, I absolutely love. I really want that. Uh, in my top 10. My Poor Brain is a really cool song. Uh, Wind Up is really great. I love Up in Arms. It's another really great song. Uh, See You is another great song. Uh, my, my cat's uh, roaming around. Um, yeah, uh, Up in Arms is great. See You. Uh, Enough Space is really great. And here's my cat. You're not going up there. You, no, no, you can't go up there. Um, <laughs> just sit down. Uh, Enough Space is a really great song. February Stars is really nice. Uh, Walking After You is a really beautiful song. Uh, and even the bonus track, too, which is the title track, Color in the Shape, uh, kind of gives me an endless, nameless vibe of um, from Nirvana's Nevermind. And here come both of my pets. They love acting up at night, it seems. Uh, Alright, I'll try to go quick, because I need to calm my pets down. They're probably getting anxious at this point. Um... So, from There Is Nothing Left To Lose, uh, Stacked Actors is a really great song. Uh, Breakout is another really great song. Uh, Gimme Stitches is nice. Generator with a talk box, talk box in the beginning. Um, Aurora is really great. Living Skin, Next Year, uh, Headwires, Ain't It The Life, and I love uh, M.I.A., a really great album closer. There's actually quite a few songs called M.I.A., uh, but that's another great one. From One by One, Low is a really great uh, song with another another very uh, entertaining <clears throat> music video. Uh, Have It All is really nice. Uh, I really wanted times like these in my top 10. That's probably my number 11. Um, and especially since Taylor's gone, I just, listening to this song kind of makes me a little more emotional. Uh, it's a very, very uh, nice song. 
so yeah, uh, times like these. Disenchanted Lullaby is another really great one. Tired of You, Halo, Lonely as You, Overdrive, Burn Away, and Come Back is a really uh, great album closer. Uh, from In Your Honor, I did not mention every song from In Your Honor because there's a lot of them on there, both disc one and disc two combined. So uh, <clears throat> I love the title track. No Way Back is another great song. Uh, I love DOA. Uh, not to be confused with the Van Halen song. Dio is a great song. Hell, The Last Song, Free Me, Resolve is another really nice song. The Deepest Blues are Black, so now we're into the uh, acoustic stuff. End Over End, uh, Miracle, Another Round. Oh, no, now we're in the acoustic stuff. Uh, my bad. Friend of a Friend is a really nice song. That was a song about Kurt uh, that Dave wrote. Uh, Over and Out, On the Mend. On the Mend is actually a song about Taylor. Uh, it Early uh, years... Uh, prior to the recordings of this, uh, Taylor actually OD'd on heroin. Like, he could have died then. Um, and when he overdosed, uh, obviously, the whole band was worried. Dave was worried, so he wrote this song. Uh, he was in a coma for two weeks, I think. So it must have been... It, the Those weeks must have felt like years for his bandmates. Uh, Behind the Men's a really nice song. Virginia Moon's a really good song. Uh, and Cold Day in the Sun, featuring Taylor Hawkins on vocals. He had, he had a really good voice. He could sing whenever he wanted to, and he had a really good voice uh, uh, for uh, some of the songs that he sang with the band. Usually whenever he would sing, it would most of the time it would be a cover of a song, and Dave would be playing drums, and then Taylor would be um, singing up front. Uh, so that's from In Your Honor. From Echo Silence, Patience and Grace, another really great album. Let It Die is really great. Uh, I Love Erase, Replace. Long Road to Ruin is another really good one. Come Alive. Cheer Up Boys, Your Makeup is Running. That's another uh, really good one. Uh, Summer's End. Uh, uh, Statues is really good, but honestly. Uh, and Home is another really uh, great uh, album closer. That's, that song I found uh, has been played in quite a uh, a bit of move, a bunch of movies, uh, but uh, that's another great one. Uh, from Wasting Light, I love Bridge Burning. Bridge Burning is an incredible album opener. I love that. I really wanted that up there. Rope is another fantastic song. Uh, Dear Rosemary, featuring Bob Mould of Hootsker Du uh, on uh, guitar and backup vocal. Uh, I actually got to see Bob Mould uh, live uh, a few months ago. Um, on his uh, solo electric tour, and he was really, really great. He played a bit of solo. He played a lot of Husker Du. He played, I think he played some, like a few Sugar songs, but um, I can do a, a separate Husker Du video. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, Dear Rosemary is great. White Limo is probably the heaviest thing they have ever made. It is incredible. And again, Dave's vocals are so amazing. If you like the, the songs where he raises his voice, then White Limo is definitely the song for you. Arlandria is another favorite of mine. I love These Days, Back and Forth. Uh, A Matter of Time is really great. Uh, Miss the Misery is nice. And uh, I Should Have Known is another great song. Uh, from Sonic Highways, I actually like Sonic Highways a lot. Not many people do, but I really love Sonic Highways. So Sonic Highways is... Um, uh, they did an HBO show where, and it was called Sonic Highways. Uh, there were eight episodes, there are eight songs on the album, and every song they uh, did was recorded in a different studio, in a different city, in a different state. And it's really, it, it's a really brilliant concept, uh, actually. Um, and some of the songs on here I love. I love... Something from Nothing was in my top ten, and it got booted out. That is such a phenomenal song. I love that. Uh, I love the clavinet from Rami Jaffe on that. I don't know if he was credited. He might have been a full time member at this point, or uh, no? I think he um, on the next album he was credited as a full time member. Uh, the Feast and the Famine is another great song. Congregation is really great. I love What Did I Do? God is my witness, uh, featuring. Gary Clark Jr., a, a phenomenal modern-day guitar player. Sorry about that. Uh, Outside is really great. Uh, In the Clear is a really nice song. Uh, Subterranean and I'm a I Am a River, they kind of go into each other. Those are really good songs as well. Uh, from Concrete and Gold, uh, 
I think out of all their albums, Concrete and Gold might be my least favorite, but I still love it. I, I, I listen to this album a lot. Uh, Run is a great song. I believe they won a Grammy for that. They won Grammys for a lot of stuff. Um, I might uh, mention that at the end. Uh, Run is great. Make It Right is really great. I love The Sky is a Neighborhood. That uh, kind of... Um, in a, in a way that, <clears throat> excuse me, in a way that song sounds a lot like Take Me to Church from Hozier, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, his name, uh, but uh, for those of you who don't know Take Me to Church, it's a song that came out earlier in the 2010s, it's actually a really good song, um, uh, but The Sky is a Neighborhood definitely has that feel. Um, uh, Lottie Da is really great, uh, Dirty Water, uh, I love Arrows, Arrows is a really great song. Sunday Rain, featuring Taylor Hawkins on vocals, which is great. I love his vocals on there. Featuring Paul McCartney. Yes, Paul, that Paul McCartney of the Beatles on drums. And, and we just had his 80th birthday, so happy birthday, Sir Paul McCartney. Uh, and uh, actually, I before I recorded this, I actually saw a video of uh, him performing Band on the Run with his band with Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl's first performance since Taylor passed away. Um, and, uh, it, it was very cool to see him back, but, uh, we can understand all the time he and the rest of the band needs during this tragic time, but Sunday Rain is a really great song. Uh, the line is really cool, and I love the title track, Concrete and Gold. Definitely progressive. Uh, and from their most recent album, Medicine at Midnight, another, uh, solid album. Making a Fire is really cool, I like that. That's played in a bunch of commercials, actually, like, right when, right when this, um, album came out, uh, this song, I don't even know if it was a single yet, I don't even know if it is a single, it, it might be, uh, but th this song is, um, played a lot, actually, so it's a nice song, uh, I like Shame Shame, Shame Shame, I remember when they released that as a single, and so many people were confused, uh, a lot of people did not like it, actually, I thought it was at first, I thought it was decent, but I've grown to like it more over time. Uh, it, it was it was an interesting song, um, and I remember when they uh, played it on SNL uh, when they were the musical guests. They played that, and they played times like these. Um, uh, they played Shame Shame, and uh, I thought it, was, I, it wasn't bad. But I've grown to like the song more over time. Uh, I love Cloud Spotter. That's a really nice song. Uh, Waiting on a War might be my favorite song on the album. I love it a lot. Uh, the title track is really nice. I love the um, the uh, sound effects uh, in the song. Uh, no Son of Mine. Okay, between Waiting on a War and No Son of Mine, those two are definitely my favorites. No Son of Mine is really heavy. Uh, it's a really nice song. Uh, Holding Poison is really great. And uh, Love Dies Young <clears throat> with one of the wackiest music videos. I, even at this day and age, like this was the same time when they got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They still have phenomenal videos. Love Dies Young, the video for that, a great song, by the way. But the video is is Jason Sudeikis playing a swim coach captain. Or a swim coach, rather. Uh, and uh, <laughs> this was also right when Ted Lasso was huge. And it still is really big. Um, and he plays the coach while five of the Foo Fighters, Pat Smear uh, wasn't one of them, where they are uh, swimming and they are in uh, female uh, swimsuits, <laughs> and seeing I, at first I thought it was Photoshop. I saw the layout on their YouTube page as that, and, I, and F, when I saw that, I was like, "What the hell is that?" And then I saw where that was from. I, I that was the first thing I saw, and then I didn't. I never saw the video until after I did. Um, but, uh, yeah, Love Dies Young is great. The video is so funny. And at the end, um, Pat Smear is, uh, cleaning the pool. And, uh, if you've seen Caddyshack, then you know what I'm trying to get at. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's my, uh, actually, I will show you my list one more time. Those were my honorable mentions. Here's my list, my top ten. And I will, uh, mention quickly, because I don't want this video to be longer than it is now. Um, but I am going to quickly look up uh, uh, the uh, amount of Grammys. I think um, when they were at the Grammys, and it was actually Taylor Hawkins passed away right before the Grammys, um, 
And uh, I think at that point, like after they won their uh, Grammys, they were nominated. They won every Grammy they were nominated for. They were the they won the most Grammys by any American band, uh, and they've won fifteen Grammys. So that's really good. So they won their first Grammy was their uh, best rock album for "There's Nothing Left to Lose." Uh, best short form music video for Learn to Fly, best hard rock performance for All My Life, best rock album for One by One. Whenever they're, uh, they have an album and they're released, uh, they release uh, material, they usually, they're, they're always nominated and they usually win most of the time. Uh, best rock album for Echo Silence, Patience, and Grace. It's between them and you two, actually. They uh, uh, win a lot. Uh, best Hard Rock Performance for The Pretender. It was also nominated for Record of the Year. Um, Wasting Light, uh, uh, Best Rock Album. Uh, Walk, Best Rock Performance and Best Rock Song. White Limo won Best uh, Hard Rock Middle Performance. Uh, Foo Fighters Back and Forth, Best Long Form Music Video. Uh, Run, Best Rock Song. And then Making a Fire, Best Rock Performance. Waiting on a War, Best Rock Song. And Medicine at Midnight, Best Rock Album. So they have won 15 Grammys, and it's really uh, uh, amazing that the uh, amount of Grammys they've won. All right, I'm going to end the video here um, because I've gone on too long, but uh, we still miss Taylor. Uh, I, I still, it's been like, it's been three months, and I still can't believe it. If you can hear, if you can hear that, that's my cat. I'll let you out soon, buddy. You don't have to worry. Um, yeah, I got to end the video soon. Uh, we still miss Taylor. Uh, we will continue to honor him every day. So please leave a like, comment if you want, view my videos, and of course subscribe and ring the bell for daily notifications. Thanks for watching this video, guys. This has been Hal Bosco, signing off. Stay safe. Take care.